Let me caution the audience, please keep your reactions as quiet as possible. Senator, Brit. I want to take you back, if I can, to the question Judy asked, asked you about some of the apprehensions people may feel about your being a heartbeat away from the presidency. And let us assume, if we can, for the sake of this question, that you become vice president and the president is incapacitated for one reason or another and you have to take the reins of power. When that moment came, what would be the first steps that you take and why? First I'd, first I'd say a prayer for myself and for the country that I'm about to leave. And then I would assemble his people and talk. And I think this question keeps going back to the qualifications and what kind of a vice president and in this hypothetical situation, if I had to assume the responsibilities of the president, what I would be. And as I have said, age alone, although I can tell you, after the experience of these last few weeks in the campaign, I've added 10 years to my age, age alone is not the only qualification. You've got to look at experience, and you've got to look at accomplishments, and can you make a difference? Have I made a difference in the United States Senate where I've served for eight years? Yes, I have. Have I made a difference in the Congress that I've served for 12 years? Yes, I have. As I said before, looking at the issue of qualifications, and I am delighted that it comes up because on the three most important challenges facing America, arms control and national security, jobs and education, and budget deficit, I have more experience and accomplishments than does the governor of Massachusetts. I have been in the Congress, and I've worked on these issues. And believe me, when you look at arms control and trying to deal with the Soviet Union, you cannot come at it from a naive position.